We have some Thalia Stompy with a mostly stock list here running through a MTGO competitive league. Win the die roll. So I 100% I have to mulligan this hand. For one, I can't cast anything except for Chalice. And for two, this hand is not doing anything unfair. Um, this hand has a turn two displacer. I don't know if that's unfair enough, but this seems pretty weak here. All right, welcome, Ian. Sorry about that chat box. I honestly think I have to mulligan this hand also. I mean, this is just, this hand is just built around Displacer. I guess I do have a turn to Chalice, which on the play might be strong enough here. I really don't want to mulligan to five. I think that's actually the strength of this deck is that it just, you're supposed to mulligan until you get something broken. And unfortunately, I don't have anything broken here. I will keep this. I have a temple, I, which is something I want. I do have a chalice. I'll keep this hand. I can probably put a thought knot on top if I can. Thalia is pretty good here. So I'm going to lead off with a cavern on human for Thalia. And pass turn. Next turn I can either cast Thalia or cast chalice or cast displacer, whichever seems to be the best case. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, I've played a little bit of uh, Eldrazi Stompy, and I think this deck is kind of similar here. See, if I had, if I had um, had a Simeon Spirit Guide in my hand, I could have dropped a Chalice on one, and I think that would have changed everything. Chalice on one against Grixis Death Shadow absolutely locks them out. Like, they have to take the Chalice here. Mulligans are absolutely super important here. I'm going to drop a Thalia. I think if they have if they kept like a one land hand that's dependent upon some thought scours and serum visions to get them ahead, I can hopefully lock them out here. Okay. Eldrazi, and to be even better, I will continue locking them out with a Thalia here. Best possible draw, I think, would be a Thought Not Seer. Okay, opponent scoops. Uh, if they get a fetch land, it comes into play tapped. So most of the lands in this deck are fetch lands. They need two lands before they can actually kill this Thalia. So I actually have a soft Thalia lock here. Yeah, it, pretty solid draws here. Well, I had two. <laughs> two draws. I scried one to the top. Um, so I think dismember is something that's actually probably important here. Um... Maybe cast out and maybe declaration in stone. I'm trying to think if there's really anything bad, anything that I'm really worried about here. I do. I think warping whale is a little weak. Um, so warping whale exiles something small or gives me a scion. I don't think it's really what I'm interested in. If I put all my removal over here. I went with one Karn over... The only change I made to your list was I, I actually only had one Worship when I was building it. So I, I bought the other pieces, but I forgot to buy the second Worship. So I said, you know what? I've seen a lot of lists with Karn. Worship's kind of swingy. I'm going to run one Karn, one Worship. Yeah, second Worship felt a little, little intense to me, and I was trying to figure out what matchups I wanted it in. So, like I was thinking, oh, Burn. Burn's a good one for Worship, but I was, then I was like, oh, they're actually already going to be bringing in Destructive Revelries, potentially. 
and um, hit the chalices, so that would just hit the worship too. So in this matchup, I'm trying to figure out what I want. I absolutely want the landish the arbiters to lock up their lands. Thalia, we already saw how great Thalia is. Uh, Thought Knot and Reality Smasher are just absolutely necessities here. I even like Restoration Angel to protect like a Leon and Arbiter, and Chalice is really good. So I really don't know what to cut here. I think Declaration and Stone is probably more powerful than Dismember, and Cast Out seems pretty neat as well. Just four mana is a lot for that effect. Yep, Declaration Stones for the Firebird. I also like it like here, like where my life total might matter a little bit. So I could just run this. That's a 60. There really isn't much to side in for this matchup. Like I could side in Karn, um, but I think I want to be more... I think I want Karn more for matchups that are going to go super long, and I have a feeling that they're just going to try to get a quick shadow on me, and I want to deal with a quick shadow or a quick Gurmag Angler. Yep. So, I have, a gem, I have double Gemstone Cavern, but that's actually what I'm going to be exiling. So, I do have... I just wish I had a second payoff card, because if you look at this hand, I actually have one, two, I have three mana turn one. I can do a turn one Thalia. Yeah, double gemstone's great, so I can just exile it to itself here. I think I keep this. A turn one Thalia might be enough to lock him out a little bit. Yeah, this seems, this seems pretty strong. Thalia seems really good right now in Modern. I mean, she's always been good. The only deck that she's not really great against are the deck that this deck is already weak against. Humans. Right? Humans get around Chalice and Thalia, and this whole, whole point of this deck is to run both. So... I have a feeling I kept a hand with more than one land here. Oh, come on, opponent. You kept a one lander against a... Okay. Yeah, I mean, they could just have a big fish here, but Declaration and Stone's going to handle that pretty cleanly. Interestingly enough, I could actually cast Simeon Spirit Guide thanks to the Gemstone Cavern if I felt like I needed an extra body, which I might actually do here because I can't really see any, I can't really see a spot where I'd want him in my hand right now. They pitched a Snappy. I mean, this is just going like perfectly to plan right now, right? So they're at 11. I have 5 power here. So I actually think I'm just going to cast him in Spirit Guide. Oh. I was trying to cast him, but I was in the wrong phase. Uh, oh, that's a punt. Oh, you can undo that? Well, that's good to know. I think I'm so far ahead here, I don't think it matters. But that is uh, that is one thing that happens when you're playing a new deck, right? Sure.
Okay. 1 and 0. Oh. Andrew, you said you didn't want to play this deck. This deck is amazing. We, we just absolutely cream one land hand, uh, one land hand opponents. I'm just giving you a hard time. No, I mean, I know that, that if our opponent kept a two land hand with a fatal push in it, I think they could have run us over. But they didn't. This this is a soft prison deck, a soft prison aggro deck, and I I think it's a, a uniquely positioned deck. Uh, humans is starting to rise up, which can certainly hurt the power of this deck. Yeah. Well, to be fair, um, I've been playing a lot of Amulet Titan, and Amulet Titan does the same exact thing. When it works, it works. But sometimes you mull to four because you actually don't have a hand that has any lands you can actually use. And then, poof, and all of a sudden you mull to four against Tron and you're dropping a turn six Titan and that does nothing against them. So this hand is an easy mulligan. I don't have any fast mana. Like, I don't do anything till turn three here. I have no lands. I keep this. I have a turn one chalice, and I try to scry into a thought not seer. Yep. I mean, I still could have this here. So I, I, as long as we don't have like an inquisition here, uh, I can land a turn one chalice. Okay, we're up against a deck that doesn't care as much about turn one chalice. Yeah, I think this is the best, like, the best possible five would probably have a thought not, but double, double temple? I mean, I can drop a, re if I top deck a reality smasher, like, if my top decks end up being thought not seer into smasher, I, I can just run away with this game. There's a smasher, so, I mean, next turn I have a reality smasher, that's just awesome. So all I've really done with this Chalice on 1 is lock them out of playing more Vials and playing uh, Noble Hierarchs and Paths. I mean, I can't really think... I mean, this, I'm going to multi 5 and I played a Chalice on 1, turn 1, and a Reality Smasher, turn 3. And I still have some cards in my hand. Yeah, so Chalice on 1 was pretty important still. As long as I still need to drop deck another threat here, because if they just make a bunch of lords and creatures that are bigger than my 5-5, five, five, one five five isn't going to be enough, and they can start racing me pretty soon. I've embraced the true part of the color part. What do you mean? I'll take 4. <laughs> it, it, it's better to be lucky than good. I mean, multi five. I, I would love to win on a multi five. So I could actually drop a. I could put a chalice on two right now, uh, but our opponent. I don't know if it matters because they have the. Oh, it is a big deal because they put the vial up to three. You're right. You're right. Okay. They would just double block here, and I would get back the chalice for nothing. Yeah, I mean, that was like literally the only thing I could lose to here. And on a multi five, I kind of had to do it anyway. So I would kill their queller, which gives me nothing back. And then I get swung at for seven 
Okay, I don't think I can attack here. Yeah, uh, when you're in a mold of five, you can't really play around to anything. Okay, so they're just straight up racing me right now, and I can't think of a situation. I can't think of a card that could pull me out of this. And just to be cute, I guess I can. Yeah. Okay, so I don't think Chalice is actually that strong here. Worship, I actually like here. I don't think they'll be able to remove all of my creatures. Uh, Honor Guard is probably not good enough. Honor Guard only hits Spell Queller, right? Declaration in Stone seems pretty good. Dismember seems pretty good. Cast Out, maybe. I don't think Honor Guard's good enough. Yeah, just the removal spells. And I think I actually cut um, the chalices here, or at least a couple of them. Yeah, I, chalice on one doesn't actually do as much, I think, to them as I... It hits their noble hierarchs, their path to exiles, and their vials, right? Unless I drop it turn one, I don't think it does enough. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Blade Man. Thanks for hanging out. Um... Chalice is okay here, it's just not super spectacular. I think I'll run this. I think I'll run one Chalice. And I trimmed to Simeon Spirit Guy because I think this game's going to go a little bit longer. I don't think my prison effects are as powerful here. This is one of the matchups that we wanted to avoid if possible. So this hand is a turn one Eldrazi Temple. Um, turn two, nothing. Easy mold. Actually, keep this. I have my I have some prison elements here, and if I top deck in I'll, any any other land, I can play Thought Knot. Any land but that land. What do you guys think of Thalia Stompy so far? It was pretty impressive against Grixis Death Shadow. They really didn't do anything the entire game. Got run over by spirits on a mold of five so far. I'm pretty content with the deck. I mean, it mulligans interestingly, which I'm happy with. Now, now my question here is: Is Thalia or Leon and Arbiter more important? I actually think that at this point, my opponent just fetched a basic island. So either they have a basic planes or access to their other colors, or they're about to get run over with not being able to cast their fetches here. <laughs> the Abzan Pyromancer deck. For those of you who missed it earlier this morning in the, in the um, stream, we faced against what I dubbed Abzan Pyromancer. It's basically like Mardu Pyromancer, the uh, older shell, or the new... The most recent shell of it, which ran Ensnaring Bridge. It was really just an Abzan Tokens deck with Ensnaring Bridge and Chalice. It was really, really interesting, but interesting in a janky way. Okay, so we're just not drawing lands. I don't think I attack with Leon and Arbiter here. Um, or if I do, I have to dismember. Yeah, I think the lock pieces were actually what made it interesting. So if I if I, I can attack here, right, and they can if they flash in something, I just need to dismember it. I think that's what I need to do here.
Okay, nothing. Sure. So four uh, dismember will cost me. I can't cast this member because of Thalia. But if somehow Thalia got removed, it would cost me five life. That is a lot of life. Okay, well, I like that. They couldn't spell queller me, if you notice, because I couldn't fetch that, so I didn't have to worry about spell queller. They couldn't counter it because I had the Cavern of Souls on it. So I was playing around pretty much whatever they could have there. Um, I think I'm supposed to take their path to exile here, which they actually can't. They can't cast the path. So what they're probably going to do this turn, they're going to spend pay two mana, crack flooded strand, get a white land, and then untap from there. Yep. I think that's what their game plan is. So, I think I want to protect Thought Not Seer, and then have my Dismember to deal with something in the future. So, once again, check. They have no instant speed, any interaction, so I can just punch them for four right here. The other consideration was I take their Captain and um, make them spend a turn because they'll be spending an entire turn to kill my thought not seer because it costs two mana at this point they're pretty pretty landlocked thanks to Leon and Arbiter I have to say I like the interactions this deck has what I like about it and what I didn't like about the Abzan company version of this deck was that instead of top decking combo pieces like Vizier and Devoted Druid um, in awkward instances where I have a Thalia in play and I draw a Collected Company, I'm actually just drawing Smashers, which is really what I want to be drawing here. So my opponent has Spell Queller up, but Spell Queller is converted mana cost 4 or less. Um, this is for Eldrazi. Yep, and I still have... Yep. I still have Smasher mana, so this is an uncounterable Smasher, which Disdainful Stroke does nothing against. They cannot Spell Queller it, they cannot Path it, they can't do anything about it. So they, I just, they just spent their entire turn not spending mana, right, because their plan was to Spell Queller. I think that was the game plan. Um, I can't think of anything I really want to do differently. I'm really, I probably should have taken out a gemstone cavern there when I was on the play. That's something I have to remember to do. I mean, you can counter it. You can cast a spell that says counter it. It just doesn't do anything. Yeah, I got to remember to cut a gemstone on the play. I was really surprised. This deck runs 25 lands. Uh, let's see. What does this deck, what does this hand do? This hand has a turn one thought not seer. Um, yeah, it does feel it feels weird. I mean, I'm amulet titan. You cut a lot of lands too, but having twenty five lands feels really weird. So yeah, I get to run a turn one thought not seer, which I think is all the reason in the world to keep this hand. I have to decide what to get rid of, and I like everything. Um, I think I need to actually get rid of the horizon canopy here. Cast out is one of my only outs to worship, right? Thalia is proven to be really important in this matchup. I need the Eldrazi Temple. I need the Simeon Spirit Guide, so I think I actually need to get rid of this. And I'm gonna yeah, I'm going I'm gonna be getting I'm gonna draw more lands. I mean this is a twenty-five land deck.
Okay. Draws no more lands. I mean, it could happen. I still have four mana available. Well, that's because I drew a land. Alright, what do they have here? Let's see. They have Rattle Chains, I don't really care about. They have a Spell Queller, which is interesting, and they have a Selfless Spirit. I don't think I really care about any of these. I was hoping to grab, like, their one removal spell, or the Collected Company, or something. So I think I just take the Spell Queller. It's the only real card they have that can interact with my game plan. It's also the biggest creature they have, which I think is worth consideration as well. Yeah, I absolutely wrecked Grix's Death Shadow. It was like a turn, one Thalia, I think both games, and then they, could, they couldn't play any more spells. So their game plan's got to be double block with Rattle Chains and Spirit here, right? And that's how they kill Thought Knot? Because they have to have an answer for Thought Knot. So I guess what I'm hoping for is one more land so I can use Restoration Angel to save Restoration Angel if I need to. Yeah, that'd be a really sweet play. So, let's see, they've played these, and they've played Rattle Chains. They still have Selfless Spirit, and they have it right there. So, their game plan here is to play Selfless Spirit and try to trick me by having four power here. Perfect. <laughs> so a bunch of different lines I can do here. I mean, I could, I can cast out something just to blow them out of the water. Like, I could attack with, um, ooh, why doesn't this deck run one Lyra in the sideboard? We certainly have the mana for it. 25 lands. Yeah, I think I'd be interested in having one in my sideboard for matchups like this, so the matchups that are more troublesome. Um, so anyways, my, my options here are I can, I can attack with Thought Not and Thalia, right? What they're going to do is they're going to flash in Selfless Spirit, maybe even a second Selfless Spirit because they have two cards in hand, or maybe a second creature here, right? And um, block my Thought Not. In response to that, I can I can either bounce Restoration Angel the Thought Knot, saving him, and hopefully costing them a Selfless Spirit trigger. I could cast out their one of their blockers, kill the other. I think what I actually just want to do is attack with both and then see how they respond since I do have two instant speed um, reactions so I can save depending upon how this works out I, I can really try to push an advantageous situation here and this is instant or sorcery and cast outs and enchantment so I'm fine here as well oh I can't cast cast out because of Thalia so I can only do resto yep So, yeah, I'll use this. So they draw the card. I did order that correctly. 
and now I get to steal a card from their hand. Ether Vile or Drog Skull Captain, I will take the Captain. They fall to 13, and now I have a decently impressive board, but I still need to draw one more land. Yeah, Baneslayer Angels... I mean, Lyra, Baneslayer Angel, they're basically the same thing. Um, they'd be really, really sweet in this list. They're double white, though, right? So double white might be the hardest part of what they have. So I'm actually hoping to draw a land so Cast Out becomes live. Perfect. I think I actually just want to attack with everything here. See how they block. Sure. Okay, so one of their selfless spirit is going to gain hex proof. That's fine. I'm going to do everything I can to save my Thought Not Seer. So I'm going to be casting out whatever. They're going to double block. I'm going to cast out one of them. So I can really kind of blow them out of the water here. Except my Thalia will die if they sacrifice his selfless spirit, right? All right, thanks, Chris. Yep. Um, get rid of the rattle chains, it's generally bigger. Now they have to lose Selfless Spirit to kill my Thalia and save their last two creatures. Yep. So now I have a 4-4 and a 3-4 and they have a 2, they have a 1-1 one, one and a 2-1 with uh, just an Ether Vial in hand. So this comes down to top decks for both of us. If they top deck something like uh, Path to Exile I could be in a little bit of trouble. If I top deck a Reality Smasher, my opponent might just lose the game. They're still hanging on to that Ether Vial. I think it's so uh, to be able to discard. I think they're holding on to it for discard for Reality Smasher, which is a nice line. Okay. Easy peasy, right? Long Trail. That is the choice of beverage tonight. Long Trail, teaks, I always double fist, I always have multiple liquids. So what I like about this deck so far is it's basically just an, it's an aggro deck, right? At its core, this is just an aggro deck, but the tax effects give the aggro element a chance because playing a fair 4 mana 4-4 four, four is, you're not going to win. I mean, Wiltleaf Liege would be the best possible version of that, and that's not good enough because you can play a 2 mana 4-5 in Tarmogoyf, and generally that's not good enough. I think Chalice on 1 is obscenely powerful right now. Hey there, Spider Space. Yeah, I'm playing your deck right now. It is absolutely fantastic. I'm loving it. Um, Andrew in the chat. I don't know how to pronounce his name there. Ixetheris. 
He's been playing this list here. I made one change. I dropped a, a second warship for a Karn in the side. Great. Now I'm gonna. Now I'm gonna. Now I feel like I'm just gonna make so many errors, knowing that the deck's creator and consistent five over is watching me here. Uh, so far, I, I have to say, uh, Spider Space, I've been really, really impressed with um, the way the deck curves out, which is something that's really unintuitive, I think, in deck building. So absolute, absolute kudos to you. Like, I look at this list and I say 25 lands, that, that seems silly. Why would you run 25 lands? But you're not running 25 lands. Well, I mean, you are, but Ghost Quarter, Horizon Canopy, like, you're running a lot of lands that do things. And most... I mean, I, if I looked at this list, and I, I would never have brewed this list because it's got 25 lands, and I just off the top of my head, I'd be like, oh, it's got to be wrong. But I think it's, 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 it's absolutely right. So, yeah, Spider Space, absolutely hat off, hat off to you. I think you've done a fantastic job with this. So, looking at this hand, I have a turn one Thalia. And if I draw another land, I have a turn three, another Thalia. That's probably not good enough, but I'm going to, since I have spider space in the uh, chat, I'm going to say, spider space, would you mulligan this hand? Yep. Like, if I knew that I'd be drawing a chalice or something, If these are what you want to top deck, not what you want to uh, do. Probably a mull? Okay. Well, let's mull again. We also are on the um, on the play, so we have a chance to draw into our cavern. Uh, this hand has a turn to thought, not seer, but nothing else. Smash, yeah. But I gotta say, I've played um, a good deal of Eldrazi Stompy, and what I didn't like about Eldrazi Stompy was I felt like I felt like it was a combo deck. So far playing this, I haven't felt like it's a combo deck. Uh, unfortunately, I have to bottom this because I need a white source of mana before that is actually relevant. We're up against Amulet Titan. So let's hope a Thought Not Seer is good enough. Although, to be honest, knowing up against Amulet, unless they drop an Amulet right now, which looks like they are. All right, I was going to say Thalia. If they don't have an Amulet, Thalia can lock them out, the big Thalia. So I need to draw a chalice so I can drop a chalice on zero to stop packs. To stop their value engine. Yep, they have another Teleria West. So they have two Teleria West in hand. Perfect. I really think that was probably the best possible draw. Chris, if you were still watching, I'd comment how we were just talking, uh, Batman and I were just talking about Serum Visions in Amulet Titan. I think I'd just take the Prime. Oh, let's see. Next turn, they can... I think I'm going to have to take Pact here. So next turn, they can play Selesnia Sanctuary for... Float one, packed, play an Azusa. They can have five mana next turn. So I think I'll take the prime now. No, I think I'll take the packed now, and the next turn take the prime. That 
that can slow him down. For the, uh, that way they can't get an Azusa. Let me check up the chat. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, Batman Chris. Not Super Saiyan Chris. Ooh. Um, so what did our opponent do there? They cast Serum Visions and two cards on the bottom. Yeah, I'm drawing Hot Fire here. So I can Ghost Quarter them, which can set them back a bit. I can Ghost Quarter Thought Knot, or I could just drop a Smasher and swing for nine. I think the line I actually want is Ghost Quarter Thought Knot, and then next turn uh, drop a Smasher. But I have the expert in the chat. Okay, that's correct. I'm just trying to think as an amulet player, what would be the most annoying to me? And I'm pretty sure it would be another disruptive element and then a swing for a ton. Okay. So they have engineered explosives and coalition relic. They could eventually EE for four, but they only have green, white, and blue mana. So I think I just take the Titan which will set them back a lot. Yeah. Next turn, swing for 13, put them at 3, which unfortunately is not dead. Um, interesting they're playing the Teleria West instead of the Extra Sanctuary. I think they drew an Azusa. Yep. There's the Sanctuary. So they're going to drop a Coalition Relic this turn. And then have a ton of... They're going to have enough mana for it if they top deck a Titan. They put themselves in a good spot. They have a Teleria West. So they could get a Titan uh, um, next turn. There's the relic. They have a ton of mana. So I. You can't top deck better than this. Um, they don't have a Titan anymore. <laughs> because I got Chalice on zero. Um, so this is just game over. I have had absolutely everything I could ask for this game. <laughs> I don't know why I'm drawing so well right now, but I am not going to complain about it. So post board, they're on the Slicing Sanctuary, so uh, Amulet Titan, which means they will have access to Path to Exile. Um, so Chalice on 1 could be pretty beneficial, and Chalice on 0 can lock them out of packs. So I still want Chalice's post board. They're just going to drop an EE on 4 and blow it up. And then I have to kill them slowly. Yep. And opponents fighting hard. Yeah. I mean, they're going to bring in Path... They're going to bring in a um, Rex Age, a one-of, also. They're not me. They're not crazy like me. I, I'm also testing World Breaker. I like having two Rex Ages in my... Um, what does Warping Whale do? Counter is a sorcery, not super useful at the moment. Makes a 1-1 one, one and exiles a tiny creature. So I think I'm just forced to attack here. They're going to draw two cards. Yeah, I haven't been impressed with uh, Hornet Queen.
if green black X was bigger in the meta right now, all right, I think I just unfortunately this does absolutely nothing to them. Might have even been a mistake to play it. But they have three cards. Um, as long as they don't top deck a Titan, I'm fine. This is a Titan. Okay. Well, I am pretty dead. I drew hot fire, and I'm still in trouble. Actually, Thalia might be the thing that saves me here. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I drew just as, pretty much just as well as you could draw here, and it hasn't been enough yet because prime time off the top. My opponent needs to sequence it correctly, but they should be able to, they should be able to swing with a 10 6 double strike trample, which is 20 damage, so I'm forced to block with Thalia. The creature will also have Vigilance, and it blocks rest, uh, Reality Smasher very well. So I don't think I have an out. Yep, they cannot get any more Titans thanks to the Chalice. So if they try going the extra Titan line, um, I can actually kill them. If they try doing something... Wait. What are they doing? Do they, they draw another... Do they naturally draw another Titan? Is that what just happened here? Dismember would do it. Unfortunately, I think I trimmed uh, Dismember, so I only have two. Um, this list I'm doing... Gips, another Smasher would do it. Sure. Yeah, I don't know what they're doing here. They can't... Their goal, I think, was to get another Titan. And they can't. They should have grabbed... Boros Garrison and Slayer Stronghold activated twice, made a 10 power Vigilance Haste Primetime. Slayers could be trapped in their hand. That's entirely possible. But why would they have floated that much mana, right? That doesn't make sense to me. Ooh. Okay. So I'm still dead, right? I don't have enough mana to do this. Yeah. Could I guess I could just do that. Um, as long as I don't have exactly... Nope. Alright. So what is good here? Cast out seems good. Um, Worship doesn't do anything because they can always even grab an EE up. Uh, Declaration and Stones probably too slow. Takatli Honor Guard to stop Primetime Battle Cry trigger or Enter the Battlefield trigger. Zoom in a bit. How do you zoom in on the cards? That is something I actually don't know how to do. I know I can do this ah. see this is the downside of having excellent vision you never notice how to make things bigger hey Chris there you go Super Saiyan Chris I did it for you Thanks to Spider Space. So, if I had to guess, I actually think I would be interested in trimming Warping Whale here. Dismember, again, these just don't hit Titan. But I like the cast out. I love the Chalice. I love the Smasher. Restoration Angel. 
does save from path. Displacer is uh, amazing. Thalia here is only good if they don't have amulet. Sorry, the uh, deckless bot is not working because I just threw this one up. Sorry. <laughs> but um, total, total P. Clover. Um, if you check out Spider Space's list, this is based off of his list. It's very, very similar. Trim a little Thalia. All right. Or you said A. I think I actually want to trim Big Thalia, right? True, true. Alright, well here's my 60. I guess it is like if they have... I mean, actually if they have amulet, does that provide an extra trigger? Uh, I like this hand a lot, even though it doesn't have anything broken. There's no brokenly good turn 1 play, but I do have a turn 2 Chalice on 1, or a, I have a turn 2 Leonin Arbiter, I guess is what's important here. And this hand is slow. No turn one play, lots of turn two plays. Yeah. It just doesn't do... I guess if I top deck a Simeon Spirit Guide, this hand gets a lot better. You've been thinking about running Stony in the matchup. Uh, I mean, maybe it stops. They're probably, I mean, they're probably cutting Ballista against you, to be honest. We'll go Human. There's a Simeon Spirit Guide, a turn too late. Um, I think I'm more interested in Thalia here than I am Arbiter. Like, as of right now, they don't have any any search. It looks like uh, they're going to have some turn three play, like an Azusa or something. Azusa or... Yep. Otherwise, they wouldn't have kept this hand. You do nothing for two turns. Ballista's fantastic against the little things. It does nothing against the bigger things. Um, we can actually even check what the... recommendation is to what to do in this situation. So I can drop a Chalice on one, or I can just drop a Thalia, I think. So I could do Chalice on, I could do Dismember the Azusa. If Azusa is doing nothing unless they have uh, a Chalice. Yeah, without without a Chalice, I think I, I think I want to risk one turn of them not having a Chalice, and then cast Thalia, and I can always Simeon Spirit Guy Dismember if I really need to. But first I want to attack. If they block, that tells me they have another Azusa in hand. Oh, true, true, true. I always forget about Little Thalia's tax. That is like my bane of, um of competitive play. Always forgetting about Little Thalia's decks. Opponent's list is a little spicy, running um, Tireless Tracker. Which is 
not a, I, I agree with you, Spider Space. I tried Tracker and Amulet because at first I was like, oh, 29, 28 land deck. I don't think it does anything. Okay. So now I get to cast Chalice on zero, Chalice on one, and um, the Honor Guard to stop a prime time. Or a, yeah, Honor Guard first over the Arbiter. Kill it. Yep. So I have to spend one mana to make X's zero. So I can't drop both without wasting Simeon Spirit Guide. Yep. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is attack. I'm not going to win the long game here. I can spend I have four possible mana, so I can dismember I can dismember the tracker. Yeah, let's start with that. And assuming they have a Titan and I think I want to drop a chalice can't do chalice on zero. Plus arbiter. Okay. I was thinking a chalice on zero to stop a titan. So when, when I was saying that the Thalia tax is like the bane of my existence, it really is. It's it's my the one thing I really forget about, and you can watch all my videos, the one consistent mistake I make in modern magic is the Thalia tax. In fact I've had a judge I actually made a made a mistake. I punted. I tried Court of Calling. No, I tried, I tried casting Collected Company. Um, it was a tricky situation because I had they had a devoted they had Sorcerer's Spyglass on Devoted Druid, and otherwise I would have had infinite mana, but I'd counted and had four mana and said, oh, I still can cast Company, but I couldn't because of Thalia, and that was my first real warning. Ended up winning the match anyway, didn't get any more warnings for the rest of the, rest of the competition. So, opponent didn't do much there. Ramanap lets them rebuy their ghost quarter, which I don't really care about. Yes. Yeah, they're they're trying to land disruption us, which I think is interesting. Um I think I want to drop a chalice. They have enough mana right now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can pay the tax and drop a Titan. So I think I want to ghost quarter their, their um, growth chamber here. Knock them off mana a little bit. Also knock them off double blue. Actually, they still have double blue. But that's a nice little two for one here. I don't know, I don't think I need to use mana for the rest of the game. Right? I know this 2-3 is going to be annoying, but I have a 3-2 first striker. They're at 6. I think I want to honor guard and blow up their Simic Growth Chamber. They're going to blow up all my lands, right? I think 
the way this opponent's played, I think they're waiting to get maximum value out of their Titan. I think they're waiting to get the extra two to pay for the Leonin Arbiter because they have a little bit of time. The only reason this does anything is because they don't have an amulet in play. Because Ramanop lets them just replay the cards I'm destroying. So all I did was I just blew that up for a little bit of tempo. Yep. So I made a card disadvantage play just for a little bit of tempo to try to knock off my opponent here. Because they now have to be very afraid at 6 life. And this is all because they don't have an amulet. If they had an amulet, then I'd never blowing up that Simic Growth Chamber would actually potentially give them more mana because they have a Zeus in play. They can replay it, bounce it a few times, and get 6 mana just off that. Yeah, Big Valley has been incredibly impressive so far. And I really like, what I like about this deck is that I can cast our turn one. They're going to rebuy Teleria West. Yep. They, oh, opponent. They transmuted without paying the Leon and Arbiter tax, so they just discarded Teleria West for nothing. Okay. There's the amulet. So I, I have, um, I need to draw a land to cast Chalice on one here. That's not a land, but I do like the double tax here. So if I attack with everything, opponent will block here block here, go down to three. They lose Azusa, which is a lot of power. Oh, hey, Crimson. The... <laughs> I drew only lands. There was, uh, like, three matchups where if I'd, I drew, like, three, four lands in a row, and if any one of those was any non-land spell, I would have won the entire match. It was really, really painful. So my, my, my lines here are play another Arbiter or Chalice. I can choose what I attack with. I'm definitely attacking with Thalia. The real question is what do I attack with anything else? I see no reason. I guess I could double block here. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. I'm trying to think of a reason not to swing with the team. Like if Chalice on one Chalice on Zero is somehow more important. I don't think it is. They clearly are trying to transmute for a Titan though. Okay, so they care about keeping Azusa alive, so they'll fall to one. This is a situation where I wish I had Walking Ballista. This one's human, this one's cat. Now we have... We're still taxing him here, so... They still don't have enough mana to... Well, actually, the amulet, with Amulet, they'll have enough mana to transmute and play a Titan. Yeah, I mean, it was, it, was, it was interesting. I mean, it just reminds me that playing Tarmogoy Fair decks in Modern is really about pairings. Yep. Takatli stops the... I'm saying they have enough to play Titan. They don't have to... Because um, they need to pay 5 mana to Transmute, right? 3 to Transmute, 2 for Arbiter. And they should, if they have a, if they have a Bounce Land in hand, they should have enough mana to also to, to bounce this back up fetch a titan, play a titan, but beyond that...
And then I have three creatures, and I swing with everything, and they die. Neat little line. Now they have their bounce land. I mean, if they could get one round of bounce of uh, enter the battlefield triggers, we'd be we'd be pretty in pretty big trouble here. But they don't. So I was saying about the Sultai League, it was a lot of fun. Um, you really need good pairings if you're playing playing Green Black X, and I feel like I'll, I'll, if you look back, any of the leagues that I ever 5-0'd with Green Black X decks, it was all when I got paired against what I was kind of building the deck to beat. You know, when I was Sultai, I was built to beat a turn 2 Fulminator Mage. It was built to beat Tron and Control. When I was on Abzan Traverse, my first 5-0 with that was... Um, the, the entire league was hollow one, hollow one, hollow one, hollow one humans. That was the entire league. It was beautiful. So I think they're just dead here. Okay. I didn't see the EE. -E. E, e on. Well, I can still cast spells, opponent. Yeah, so I attack here. They have to block. Okay. And they have to naturally draw Titan. <laughs> Thalia versus the world. Opponents wrote that he made a mistake here. He's got Summoner's Pact in his hand, but he can't cast it because we have Chalice on zero. <laughs> He's saying he should have cast the Pact last turn. I mean, he had no idea we had chalices in hand, but he did know we have them in the deck. I don't know if that's a mistake on him. Let's see, let's see how much mana does he have. Three, um, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, like it. It made sense to um, to hold the chalice, to hold the pact. Then, otherwise, he can't play Titan and go. Yeah, he could. Yeah, because he said he f sixed. Yep. So they can just buy back Ghost Quarter. Yeah. I think I still play it. <laughs> okay. All right. Untap your prime time. Give them haste. Go to game three. So he should be attacking with 16 power right here. Yeah, these games have been very swingy. Yeah, I feel like I'm in control and control and control, and they get one card, which the power level of it just completely blows anything we're doing out of the water. So they already have Sun Home in hand in play, so all they have to do is get um, any white land. Yeah. Just, just once he targets a double strike, I'll concede. Double strike. 16 damage. Okay. I'm on the play, so I think I take a cavern out. Let 
Let's try it out. Yeah, I think there's a get shot. Let's try it out, spider space. Spyglass. Oh, yeah. Spyglass is actually much better than Stony. Good call. War decks do very well against Amulet. Oh, what would I, um, what would I cut, Chris? Okay, this hand has Ghost Quarter to interact with my opponent. A turn to Leon and Arbiter. It has nothing unfair. But I do have a Temple, which makes my hand, me like the hand a little bit more. I think I keep this. Mull? Okay. It's already at six here because I have Double Thalia. I want to get inside your brain. What's your reasoning for mulling this hand, Spider Space? True. I would have cast Arbiter. Smasher bad. True. Opponent has some interesting things like, uh, Tireless Tracker. I'm just going to cast Chalice on one here. Yeah, uh, my plan is to go Chalice, Thalia, Thought Knot. So. My next Chalice on, on zero can stop an Engineered Explosives from wiping away my Chalice. The Smasher is very good, but not when you not when you're light a little light on lands. Okay, I feel like this I feel like we're in a decent spot here, thanks to all our taxing effects, and then I can just blow up all their lands with the ghost quarters. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to take the payoff spell. Although, Ramanat makes my ghost quarters bad. But, Titan is what I have to take here. Leon and Arbiter would be a very good draw right now. Yeah, I've been I've been impressed with Ramanak Excavator from the amulet side of things. Displacer is very good. Be right back. So opponent has all the mana in the world, just no titan at the moment. <laughs> I want to... I've been impressed with Ramana, but you run fetch lands. Amulet Titan doesn't run fetch lands. What Amulet Titan does do, though, is run Teleria West. And when I realized that Teleria West uh, lets you loop... You could... What? 
Um, you can loop, once you discard a Teleria West, you can buy it back and then play a Bounce Land and bring it back to your hand. You can just keep looping that way. You run Ghost Quarter right. I've always known about the Ghost Quarter locks, but I really feel like Ramen Up, you need more than one thing. He's got food. He's got so much food. Uh, he was just telling me, he was upset. I left him in the garage for a little while. Okay, up to 12. Boros is in play. Yeah, it really is. I think they're just frustrated with their life total. I can't think of another reason to fetch it. Do I flicker this to get four more damage through? Let's do the math. Um, this is ten damage. I'll put them at two. I guess it's because they were dead on board. <laughs> uh, let's see. Flickering costs three. One, two, three. And then I can also drop this displacer. Or flicker again. I like that. I think I, I, think I flicker... Otherwise, I knock him down to six. I actually, it doesn't change the clock any, so I'm not going to flicker here. Yeah. Because it doesn't change the clock at all. They block here. So... My line here is to... I can flicker twice, right? Yeah. So I want to flicker Thought Knot on their draw step, and then flicker their blocker, and then swing for lethal. So I'm not doing anything else. I still have a ghost quarter I could always use to blow up something. Like I could blow up, um... Yeah, they draw a card. So they have nothing. I'll just get rid of the Ramanop. And that should be game. This deck definitely has legs, Spider Spice. Spider Space. It's a spicy bro. I've been impressed with it when I've been chatting with Andrew about it. I've been really liking it. I've been liking the list a lot. Okay, so... I have a turn one Thalia. If I top deck a land. Yeah. <laughs> so much faster than me. I'm, I'm like looking through it. I'm like, so I got a turn one Thalia. If I top decked a. If this hand had an Eldrazi Temple, it'd be a turn one Thought Knot. Alright, Spider Space, if you weren't here, I would keep this hand. But you are here, so I'm going to say, would you keep this hand? It's got a... Yeah, it's got... So I'm just looking at it. It's got disruption element. It's got another disruption element. And it's got this. And I I can play anything I draw. Like, now I can do a turn two Thought Knots here. Which is probably one of the coolest things you can do in Modern, right? 
We did a turn one thought knot a little bit ago, Chris. Oof. That's fun. So, we'll just pass here. I'm going to go thought knot next time. Opponent serumed top bottom. So, don't know what we're up against yet. It's probably Phoenix. I mean, to be fair, it's not just a thought seize. You all, to get it turn one, you have to do a lot more. I know they have two blue up, but I think there's nothing... There's no reason not to just jam Thought Knot here. Okay. So we're up against Blue Eye Control. It's trying to be sneaky here. Spell Snare hits my Thalia. Thalia hits a lot of what they're trying to do. Yeah, I thought they might have been holding up something, but they're holding up Spell Snare, which means I'm glad I didn't drop Thalia. Um, Teferi's their win condition. Cryptic slows me down. I think I just need to take Teferi. Yeah, sneaky. They have plenty of mana. I'll just take the best card in their hand. There's an argument to be made to take, um, not Teferi. What's the best card in their hand, then? Okay, I was just about to say there's an argument for Spell Snare because it stops Thalia. But I get to, I get to drop a Displacer next turn. I guess if you're going from the Tax element and you want to make sure Thalia sticks, then you can make this cost five, Cryptic cost 5 and Teferi cost 6. You can kind of slow them out of the game. Oh, uh, we won the amulet match. Okay. I don't know why opponents didn't play colonnade here. So they have cryptic mana up. I'm gonna go to combat here. catch up on the chat. My line might work. Uh, now we can take the cryptic which they can cast in response. Yep. All roads lead to Rome or victory. True, if I plan on flickering it. Did I have the displacer in hand when I did that? Um, I think I want to play a ghost quarter here. I can flicker once, twice. So I'll do this on their draw step. Make them spend a mana on their turn. This... So opponents at 9, I just like how beefy the creatures are. Playing Collected Company with a bunch of 3-2s can kind of feel a little, little strenuous. A 4-5, four, a 4-4 four, four is kind of a relief here. Alright, they're going to Vendillion click. Targeting me. Sure, you can get rid of my Thalia. Yeah, you can definitely take uh, Terminus in response to the trigger. OK. 
Okay. Uh, I think the only thing worth taking here is Cryptic, and then I'll do it again and take Timely. Um, actually, they're tapped out, right? They're going to play a Colonnade Pass. I'll take the Timely, and then I'll do it again. I don't care about Relic of Progenitus. I'm just going to take Cryptic Command here and then swing at them for 7. I, With how much mana they have, I don't think I really care about Spell Snare. I know it stops my Thalia, but I'm not really worried that much about it. Um, I can Chalice on 1, which they'll Spell Snare. When they reveal the Miracle, we get a chance to respond. I can bounce click, right? I can bounce click. So I can bounce twice still. I can bounce click. They get a trigger. They'll target my hand. Um, I don't really care. Then I swing for seven, and then I get them on their upkeep. I like that line. Yep. Uh, was I saying it? I think you, you probably you probably typed it way before I said it, but I'd like to feel like I was kind of kind of on it there. Like if they make their own hand better, I'm just gonna take a card from it. Their own. I think they're what they have to do here is make their own hand better, like put a path in their hand. Yep. They got rid of Relic. Except for Thalia. I always forget about the Thalia attacks. Have you considered putting any man lands into the deck? That is one thing I actually kind of liked about um, Eldrazi Stompy. So I can't do anything except for like a chalice on zero. So I'll just pass. Sure. So they drew an opt. Keeping Ghost Quarter up for Colonnade. So, Serum Visions is what I have to take here because I don't care about Spell Snare and I don't care about Negate. And the opponent's just dead. I'll blow up their colonnade. Yeah, mana base is really tight. You're right. And I think Ghost Quarter is more important, to be honest. Ghost Quarter is really good right now. Okay. Sorcerer Spyglass. Um, number one. Um, cast Out can deal with the Fairy. I think Dismember is probably pretty bad here. Which makes the uh, Warping Whales interesting. Declaration and Stones probably pretty bad. Like I think these are bad. That's interesting. That's interesting to me. All right. Oh, uh, Spider Space. I'm not sure when you. Yeah, you were here for the um, Spirits matchup, right? 
the cavern is the only reason I won that matchup. Both caverns. I was able to give Smasher, I was able to give like my Thalia early protection so it couldn't be countered. And then I was able, they had a um, disdainful stroke in hand and Reality Smasher just came right in. Is this member more important than Declar- yeah, my life doesn't matter. Okay, so I have three cuts. One, counter a sorcery spell. So Warping Whale does get rid of their 3-1 flyer, but I don't really care about their 3-1 flyer that much. I don't really care about click. Are there any sorceries I care about countering? Maybe? Terminus. Okay. It's weird to think of, I always think of Terminus as an instant. So I think I want one Dismember, one Warping Whale. I like the idea of Karn here. Yeah, we've only seen Deferi, we haven't seen Jace yet. And if I have to cut one more card, probably Restoration Angel. Yeah. His Restoration Angel just saves, it saves my creatures from Path, but I'm going to be dropping a Chalice on one anyway. I think I'd rather have a Karn than a Resto. Mostly I just want to play a little bit with Karn. Alright, what do we have here? We have a turn one Chalice, which is an awesome play, but beyond that this hand does nothing. I'm inclined to mulligan this hand, but I'd love I'd love for you to disagree with me, because then I can know that I'm still learning. What do you think, chat? Particularly spider space. True. I really I really just want Eldrazi Temple. We're up a game, I'll keep a risky seven. True. Looks like they have an opt or manatize. Leon and Arbiter would be a decent draw here. Um, honestly, another Simeon Spirit guy would be okay, so we can drop a turn to Thalia. Yeah, I mean, it was really just like a four land hand with some late game payoff. I think I want to cycle this cast out, but I don't know if I want to do it now. Uh, there's no real reason to do it now, because even if I draw a temple, it doesn't do anything. So I'll just pass. Then I'll cycle it on their turn. Like, if this big Thalia was little Thalia, then I could just drop her right now. That would have felt pretty nice. Gonna see a counter spell here. I need to draw lands, which is why I think it was important to cycle that cast out. Even though cat, why didn't my opponent fetch? Well, I guess it doesn't matter. I think it's why it's important to get that cast out. Is I need to hit another land. Without a couple more lands, particularly an Eldrazi Temple, this hand is kind of falls flat. Like I don't really have anything left in my hand, but now I have Karn. Interesting. 
interestingly enough, I can actually ghost quarter their field of ruin right now. I can make it 2-2. Two, two. I know I need to draw more cards, but I think I just want to make it 2-2 to try to get a little bit faster beats on. That'd be 5 power, which is a 3 turn clock. And I can surprise them with a chalice on 0 next turn to make them a surprise a little bit bigger. I can actually make it a 4-4 four, four next turn, drop a chalice and make another dude. Oof. Okay. Well, I need to draw my one of dismember. I definitely need to bring in more. Um, I can knock it on the ten. Karn's gonna die from Bane Slayer. Right. I think it's more valuable to get the dude out. I don't think they're going to run a board wipe when they have a Bane Slayer in play. That just seems weird. If I play Leon and Arbiter right here, I can get in trouble because they can field the Ruin me and I, they, I can't pay for it and they can. I could also just drop a Chalice on two. Which would make my dudes five fives. Which doesn't deal with first strike, but is interesting at the very least. I think what I want to do is play Leon and Arbiter. Ghost Quarter their Field of Ruin. Yeah, the, the Chalice route seemed nice. I'm going to Ghost Quarter their Field of Ruin right now. Although I do need one more land for Smasher to be good. I don't want to get locked out. Okay, I'll swing for seven. Knock him down to eight. I really need to draw an out for this. Yeah, Chalice on 2 seems like it might be a little pain, more painful for me. It stops Snapcaster Mage and like Mana Leak and Negate, but not much else. Wait, Spider Space, sorry, I didn't catch it. Yeah, I have a Chalice on 0 and a Chalice on 1. Just to make these guys a little bit bigger. I thought about putting a Chalice on 2 just to make my Constructs 5-5s. Five The second chalice on one. I can't put two chalices on one though, because the it would be countered, right? How can I do two chalices on one? True. Yep, you're right. Alright, I, I like that line. That that's probably what I should have done. You are correct. This is why I'm just humbly playing this deck and didn't brew, brew its magnificence. I, mean, I once again want to compliment what this deck's mana base does. Uh, I don't think enough people focus on mana bases when brewing, and a 25 land mana base may look crazy in what's functionally an aggro taxes deck, because most taxes lists don't run as many lands as a control deck. But this deck does, and it needs to, and it works very well. Because the lands are spells. By the way, I have no idea what this one does. Creatures you control get plus one, plus one. Oh, that's kind of neat. Uh, what are they attacking? They're attacking Karn. Okay, so they go up to 13 here. So, I have a feeling they run Settle the Wreckage. If you're running Bane Slayer, you're not running Terminus, you're probably running Settle, right? OK, 
Okay, take care of a token. That's a little mean. Land. Cool. So I have 5, 10, 13 power. They're just dead, right? They should not have attacked my Karn. Okay, 4 -o. Smash. Let's see if we can make a 5-0 here. Uh, first time playing the deck, but with the excellent coaching of, of the designer of the deck. And Chris. Chris has been there all along. So this will be on YouTube tomorrow at some point. Yeah, this is this is the um this is Tom Medivex sixty, I believe. And then Ixetheris made made a uh different sideboard and I tweaked one card from that sideboard. I took out the second worship for the Karn. Uh, I will play first. I have a turn one Lee own an arbiter or Thalia. So this is a keep, but I don't know what the right thing is on the play here. Uh, I could do a turn one Arbiter, which can shut down any fetch land deck, but if not running a fetch land deck, that could be painful. Turn one Thalia shuts off a lot of decks here, too. Yeah, this is definitely a keep. Uh, I should probably just say keep first. I'm, I'm keeping this. I'm just trying to, like, talk through what I can do. Because um, I could also just play a Temple Pass and then do a turn two Thought Knot, which I think is wrong. I think what this hand wants to do is turn one Leonin or Thalia, Turn two, Leona Nathalia. Turn three, Thought Knot. Okay. Yeah, turn one, Thalia does have a higher, um, I was, I'm just picturing my opponent having a hand of fetch lands and me just giggling like a little schoolgirl casting Leon and Arbiter. Oh, you guys are making me a taxes player. What's going on here? Gut shot. Okay. That was a little painful. Uh, do you guys want to do it again? Let's do that again. Let's do this again. We're trying to beat a Phoenix deck here. Still don't know if it's mono red or is it. Okay, is it Phoenix? This is the bane of the format. Let's see if we can take him out. Okay. Let's shred their hand a little bit. I don't care about surgical, like at all. I think I just need to rip this serum visions from their hand. Yeah, because surgical I don't actually care about at all. Um, and I guess I attack. So opponent does have a bunch of fetch lands. So I could have punished him with an arbiter, but. Oh, that's true. Man, we should run Mutagenic Growth just so we can not be able to cast it under Thalia. There's a Scalding Tarn, pass. It's a 
interesting. Um, I think I want to... I have four mana. This is my fifth. I think I want a Horizon Canopy, crack it, play Leonin. Okay, good. I have Smasher next turn. Two, three, four, five. They've got a fetch now, and then they're going to spend mana to Thought Scour, and I will swing at them for a lot. <laughs> Maple syrup heist of the century. Okay, so that is a Thought Scour, which doesn't do much for them. They need a Faithless Looting, and they need a bad. Uh, unfortunately, I also need a removal spell for this thing in the ice, because three more cards, and it's flipping. Okay, two more cards, and it's flipping. They have Surgical in hand, so one more card, and we can flip here. And when they flip it, they get to draw a free card off Thought Knots here. Yep. They have a gut shot. They can flip it right now. Flipping it will draw them a card. What are they doing here? That's yeah, a surgical. I actually wouldn't mind if they searched my deck and took all my Thalias out because I don't want to draw anymore. True. I don't think I can just drop a Smasher the next turn, though. Like, we have two cards. We have three cards in hand. One is a Scalding Tarn. Um, and they're holding priority, and they're... I don't know what they're doing right now. Well, I like that even more. Just F6, there's nothing else we can do here. If they flip it, they flip it. Alright, another surgical. Yeah. I really hate Phyrexian mana cards. <laughs> they all happen to be in their hand. They had gut shot, surgical, surgical. All of them right there, 20 cards deep in the first uh, third of their deck. I do not miss your taxi and probe. I would run it in every single thing I ran, every single deck I have. Okay, so we might just be dead here if we don't just draw a dismember. Because uh, they don't have to attack. Chalice on one is a little late. Um, I have five, six, seven mana, which is enough for a Smasher and a Thalia. I think I need to, I need to attack with Smasher. Uh, they just take it and then kill me, right? Yeah, I'm just dead. 
Uh, we're about to fall down a game here. Unless they block with Crackling Drake, then we still have a chance. If you use this second turn, there's 13 in the air, dead. Okay. <sighs> I think I want dismember, right? Declaration stone seems okay here. Is Worship worship can't be good here because they're just gonna flip thing. Cast out seems interesting. Yeah, that sequence from them, I mean they, you can see they went in the tank for a little while on it. That sequence from them was really good. There's nothing else we could really do there. Ooh, Blood Moon, yeah. So I will have two Declaration Stone to deal with Phoenixes, one Rest in Peace, I can dig that. I don't think Rest in Peace is great here, but it's interesting enough. A Warping Whale. Counters a mana. Nope, Metamorphose is an instant. Uh, Warping Whale doesn't do much here. Uh, actually, it kills Thing in the Ice. Warping Whale kills Thing in the Ice. Yep. So I have one slot left. Either an Arbiter or a Rest in Peace. Yeah. Arbiter can attack. This hand is an easy mulligan. Um, I don't do anything. Turn one, nothing. So mulligan. I'm inclined to keep this. If, if I know that their game plan is Blood Moon, I have a turn to Chalice, and I do have a basic planes here, and I do get a Scry to try to dig two more land. Yeah. I'm just trying to talk out why I think they keep this. I also have a Cast Out, which can cycle to get me another card, so I can kind of get back up and see a little bit more. So I want to Scry to preferably an Eldrazi Temple here. So that's bad. Yep. I know I said scry to a land, then got rid of the gemstone. I just don't like I don't really consider gemstone to be a good land here. Thalia would be good here. Um, no Thalia, so let's just run Chalice. Opponent's gonna get a opt right here. I don't see the point to Ganjo Castle. I think it's cute. I think I'd rather have an extra basic planes, to be honest. It's better against Field of Ruin. It's better if you want to ghost quarter yourself. Uh, it's better against Blood Moon. And Ganjo Castle, like if that was a planes right now, I'd I mean I already have the basic planes. So I don't really need I need a waste more than anything here. Ooh. Okay. I think I want to Thought Knot here. Um, oh, I can't Thought Knot. That's painful. I can cast out.
I think if I could thought not, I could take then a braid from their hand to protect the chalice. Really? No displacer? Okay. I would have cast displacer right there and tried to untap with it. Uh, interestingly enough, uh, Is it Phoenix is starting to run more dispels and less spell pierces, which means cast out is really, really good. I don't know if he can flip it with a chalice on one, to be honest. Like, I don't know if he can flip a thing, unless he's got an abrade in his hand. Yeah, Manamorphose, 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 Manamorphose. That'll do it. Okay, there's one. Knowing he doesn't have an abrade is nice. Oh, you would have cast out right then. They they're stuck on lands. I think I'm just going to play displacer, make them do it, and then cast out next turn. I might have just punted here. Okay, they hit the land. But they, they missed a land drop. Um, never not punished. I don't... I, I would actually argue I don't think he made a mistake there. Um, my opponent had, had, missed a, had missed a land drop. And they were dumping one mana spells into Chalice of the Void, which I think is a sign of weakness. It means they don't have an abrade, they don't have a way to answer Chalice. Their goal is to just come in with a giant 7 8. If they didn't have, like, they didn't, they weren't able to flip thing, which means my line, I think, was correct. Sure, he can still do that, but he hadn't yet. I don't know, maybe, maybe it was incorrect. Probably was. Uh, so, I'm actually inclined to just dismember right here. And then still hold up cast out. Dismember right here plays around um, this bell. Right, he can't dispel. True, true. Uh, negate. He probably doesn't bring that. I don't think that, I don't think they run. Um, is it charm anymore? Right. So I really need a land to be able to cast my thought not seer. I can't. Oh, Chef at Dunes. Sorry. Yep. All right. I just thought not now. Um. Yeah, I like thought not more than Smasher. Maybe my alcoholic beverages have caught up to me this league. It's also like really late for me, so fatigue is setting in here. They have a beacon bolt in the graveyard, which will be killing this, most likely. Um, target white or blue creature. This does absolutely nothing to me at the moment. I don't care about this. Uh, I just need... Actually, all these are countered, so I'm just going to take the phoenix, which is pretty awesome. They're going to... Yep. Pitch a couple spells so they can beacon bolt my thought not here. And then I can untap and smash them. Yep, 
Yes. I just don't care about, I don't think I care about volley. One, two, three, four, five. How's the burn matchup for this deck? Next turn I swing for ten. Yeah, I was 100% taking the bird. Uh, I was just trying to figure out what... Alright. I think I cast out um, and then swing for 5, put them to 9, and then untap, swing with double smasher. Yeah. I'd actually argue that maybe we need two cast outs in the sideboard, or maybe even one main board instead of this member. Cast out is really impressing me because you can always cycle. I think I've brought it in almost every match. What do you think about that spider space? Instead of like a dismember, um, replace one of the dismembers with the cast out. That way you can run it main. There's the abrade. Okay, they finally got to it. Ratchet Bomb on the side is pretty neat. Alright. So, opponent's just dead here. Because they can't even, they have, can't even double bolt the Smasher. Okay. Anything I want to do differently here? I want to bring the gemstone cavern back in and cut the arbiter. What do you guys think? Yep, gemstone back. Um, always need a reminder about that. I think I cut the arbiter. I don't want spyglass. No, 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 no. This looks good to me. We win this, and we 5-0. Oh. I want to play this deck, and I'm, I think I'm going to, I have, what am I missing? I'm missing four Simeon Spirit Guides, four Displacers, two Chalice of the Void, and I think I have everything else. Oh, I need the, I need all the Thalias, sorry. But I have... this and I have most of this mana base. All the expensive cards. I've got all the caverns and everything else. I've been impressed with this deck. I mean obviously I haven't seen the bad side of the variants yet. Even my multi five in match one was a pretty good multi five. I mean yeah if you don't have chalices in caverns I think this can be a little rough. So, um, Spider, I actually, I think that a Ganjo should be cut for another basic planes like you were talking about, like in your list. Can't next league. Uh, I think this is a pretty good matchup. Uh, I need to watch out for a braid. I mean, watch out for. I really can't. They have to find a braid. I. 5 0 5. Yeah, let's live the dream. Okay, so I have a gemstone cavern. I have a turn one thought not seer. And I have a declaration in stone. Okay. How do I sequence this? Yeah, I'm pretty sure this is a keep. Like, I'm like 99% sure. Like, it's got a turn one thought knots here. 
Um, so I, I played Gemstone Cavern. What do I get rid of? One, two, three, four. I can't get rid of a Spirit Guide. I can't get rid of a land, right? That's my four. I don't want to get rid of a Thought Knot, and I don't want to get rid of a removal spell. Here's the Spider Space's current list. So YouTube viewers can see that as well. Yeah, this is just super painful. I do like having Declaration in Stone against a Fast Phoenix draw. Oh, what happened? <laughs> oh, well, I'm stupid. Gemstone is normally a colorless land, but it's not right now. Nope. Don't worry, we have uh we have a chalice next we have a thought not next turn. Our opponent's gonna go really slow here. Don't worry, we're gonna top deck perfectly here. Question, do I crack the canopy? Yeah, I think you're right. I think I wasn't supposed to use gemstone here. Especially since my hand is really good with Thought Knot. If I would um, been a little more coherent... I think I crack canopy here. I really... That would give me two chances at hitting a colorless land. What do you guys think? I'm not going to shame scoop. No, don't crack it. I think I crack Canopy here. Yeah, I'm still in this game. I think I crack Canopy to give myself another chance. Because then I'll still have four mana next turn. which is just making my gemstone play kind of embarrassing here. Yeah, I'm cracking one canopy. Yep. Okay, there's my ghost quarter. So, now I have colorless. Okay, why would you opt in response to Thought Knot unless you're trying to get a land? It must be Land Light. Put a card on bottom. Okay, well that's one way we can lose to Phoenix, right? All right, well, we have an answer for their threats. We have nothing. I'm not going to shame scoop. I wonder how... I think I would have mulliganed that hand. I'm just going to dismember now. Need to draw a basic plane so I can displace her. 
Unfortunately, I also need to draw a basic wastes. That's fine. I've no no answers here. There is a single. I believe there's a single wastes in the deck, Kevin. Planes. Okay. Uh, I believe we're just dead here. One top, one bottom. Yeah. I, I've not seen ceremonious rejection out of a Phoenix deck. I've never seen that. One top, one bottom, lightning bolt. That's a little show offy swing for lethal. Okay. Well, we forewarned. I seriously did not play that Phoenix match to the best of my abilities. Uh, but I think we saw the power level of the deck. I think we saw what it can do. Just want to check it out right here. So I think that I want. I think I want to cast out main. It just cast out was a card I just kept bringing in. I think I think it's just never dead. Um, yeah, it can it can outrun Tron. It can also have it has Blood Moon to also help against Tron too. It's just that at a recent I think GP Tron wrecked Phoenix. They dropped an Ugin and there's nothing that they could do uh, right on camera. And I think that made people a little bit more afraid of the Tron matchup. Yeah, I mean, the, the one of the reasons Phoenix is the best deck in the format is because it can even win its bad matchups. And when you have a deck that can also win its bad matchups, and even its worst matchups are still mid-40s percentage for winning, then you have a really good deck there. Um, what was it? Oh, I, I want another Basic Plains. Uh, Iganjo, Castle, like... What is this for to protect Thalia? To protect six cards in the deck? I think that's just too cute. I think in a meta with Blood Moon, Field of Ruin, and Ghost Quarter, I think you want the extra basic planes. Yeah, 78% Phoenix? Well, I mean, you're a really good player, so your percentage is going to go up there. When you, when you have a slightly favored matchup and you're well prepared for it and you're a really good player, you're going to have a really insane win rate against a really good deck. My, my Abzan Company win rate against Grixis Death Shadow is disgusting, and it shouldn't be. That's a slightly favored matchup for, for Abzan Company. What was something else I wanted? Um, yes, I mean if you're gonna be if you're playing against Ross Merriam on Is It Phoenix, you're gonna be in for a rough time. Uh, no matter what deck you're on, you can have turn one chalice. It doesn't matter. We'll never know the exact percentage because even if we have, you know, Reed Duke against Ross Merriam, we'll never know how Green Black Rocks versus Is It Phoenix's matchup is. We'll never know that data because those may be the two, the best Rock player, the best Is It Phoenix player in the world, butting heads against each other. But after they have a, after they have twenty matches, they'll start adjusting their play. Sorry, after one match, they'll be adjusting their play to to beat the way that player is playing, and then there's gonna be mind games and things like that. So we'll never have a really real gauge of that. But we do have, and uh, what I'm actually proud to show off in the um, Abzan I think I'll show it off right here. 
So in the compendium here, under articles and resources, we don't just have my Abzan company sideboard guide, but we also have a Google Doc, which keeps track of a bunch of different players' results. So we can try to see, here's me, here's all my win lost data with Abzan Company in sanctioned matches. And you can see what my win rate is and my loss rate is. Here's, I have a loss in here to Spider Space. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's tracked right in here. You can see a bunch of other players and we have room for more. Um, but you can see the data it will kind of balance itself out over time. I may have a good win rate against one deck and a bad win rate against another, but other players may have different recordings and different findings and eventually it will balance itself out. ORAT? What's ORAT? Oh, yeah, uh, that's a good player. You know, when you make a tiny little mistake against a very good player, you will lose. It it's one thing that you know people people on Reddit always talk about playing on um, Cockatrix or playing on X Mage, and they get all this testing data. When I played on X Mage, my win rate was like eighty something percent. I thought I was amazing. And I hopped on MTGO and realized that, no, you're just playing really medium to bad players on X-Mage and Cockatrix. The good players are on MTGO. Once, when you, it's not even just sequencing, it's mulliganing, it's everything. I mean, mulliganing right here. I made a terrible mistake here because I don't know how to pilot this deck effectively. I think I did okay, but I'm not, not anywhere near the level that I should be to play this deck at a Pro Tour or anything, let alone a GP. I'm not, I cannot play this deck 100% efficiently. Oh, I hate paper mistakes. I do those, <laughs> I, I'm, I've been, I used to only play on paper, now I pretty much uh, exclusively play on MTGO. It's rare for me to play on paper. And I made a mistake at a invitational qualifier with Abzan Company. I forgot an Eternal Witness trigger. I accompanied into Eternal Witness and a Sync Collector. I had Sync Collector resolve first, and then I had my Eternal Witness trigger. I just forgot about it. And I did something else, and I said, oh, my Eternal Witness trigger, but I had already, already passed priority, so it just, it just happened. That was round one. I ended up winning it. Um, but I was really mad at myself, and I made a point not to make any more mistakes for the rest of the uh, rest of the match, rest of the elite, rest of the tournament. I ended up top eighting that, and I lost in the top eight to scales. Yep, yep. That's that's always what it is. It's always a mechanical thing. Uh, that's what I found, like uh, Mitra's Bobble triggers or things like that where you're just not... When I, I was playing Abzan Traverse a lot, and I played it in paper a lot, hundreds and hundreds of matches, and I wasn't forgetting Bobble triggers. And then I switched to playing on MTGO, and I did hundreds and hundreds of matches on MTGO, and I got lazy. It wasn't I don't know if I was lazy, but I, my mind was... When I play on MTGO, I, I'm sharper on certain things and kind of less sharp on others. It's a little bit blurrier. And I was forgetting bobble triggers and when I went back to paper because I was so used to it being taken care of for me. <sighs> yeah, it's the worst. Pummer. Did that cost then that's what cost you the match? Yep. Yep, yep, people always try to test you on Chalice. I, I stole a game against Blue Tron when I was on um, Salt Eye Midrange by testing my opponent. I flashed in a Snapcaster Mage, he had a Chalice on two. I looked at him, he said, okay. I said, great. <laughs> I swung at him for two two damage on my, on my turn, and one. Uh, some scandal, okay.
unfortunately. I don't, I don't know too much about uh, Turtwall. I don't know anything about the scandal. But I am going to sign off. It's been absolutely a blast having all of you with me. And a special shout out to Spider Space for all of your great coaching here. Oh, thank you. Thank you for uh, being here. I definitely want to catch one of your streams to or more than one, to uh, watch you pilot this deck effectively. I'm very intrigued with this. Um, and if you, yeah, if there's anything I if there's anything I can do, let me know. If you need matchup data or anything like that, or if you want to cram some games in against a bunch of different decks, let me know. Uh, I'll be glad to do that. Maybe we can even like do a simul stream. <laughs> so... Have a good night. It was great seeing you guys. I'll see you soon.